All right, hi guys. Um, here we're going to start another section of notes. We're going to continue with day two of 8.3 and 8.3, 8 8.5, which is the rest of the exponent properties. Um, we have a couple properties here that we've talked about before. Uh, multiplying powers, which is where we take the same base, and if it's being multiplied, the exponents add. You'll see there's a little correction to be made here. So these are going to be added exponents. Um, we've talked about power to a power. Power to a power is where we have some base raised to some power, or multiple bases, can be multiple ones. Each one is raised to this new power of n. Um, and when we do that, they are multiplied. You can see m times n here. So that's a multiplication of powers. So adding of powers when we multiply bases. And if it's power to a power, we multiply exponents. All right, and the next one we're talking about is power of a product. And power of a product is where we have multiple um, different bases inside of it. And it's always raised to a power of n. Each one of these bases um, are raised to that power of n also. You can see that there's a mistake here. So it should be a to the n and b to the n. It should be the correction there. That's supposed to be an n. Hopefully you guys can all read that. Um, we also talked about negative exponents in the first day. We said that anytime that there's a negative exponent, it tells us to move a position. So in this case, we would take the base and I signify it much like this, where we move positions. Um, and this, it will go to the denominator for this one. And we've seen it in the denominator also, and it moves to the numerator. So we're familiar with that one. And the last one that we're going to talk about here is a zero exponent property, which says any base raised to zero will result in one. Okay, if the with the exception of a cannot be equal to zero. That was the one exception for that one. All right, so the two new properties then um, are the dividing powers and the power of a quotient. Dividing powers was really closely related to actual inverse to the multiplying powers property. I'm sorry, multiplying exponents. Okay, um, where we have multiplication between like bases, we added our exponents. If we're going to divide them, I'm guessing you can go ahead and figure this out. It's going to be subtraction. So we're going to subtract those. But the way that we do it actually matters, just like subtraction, order matters. So what we're going to do is take a like base, A, and if we want it to end up in the numerator, and I'm just going to put a 1 here to show that it's in the numerator. We would normally not write that. We're going to take and you subtract the exponent in the numerator, so m, and you subtract the exponent of the denominator. Again, order matters. If we want it to end up in the denominator, we do the opposite subtraction. So let's put a in the denominator. And in this case, we would not take m minus n. We're going to take the where, it lo where it's going to be located in the denominator. In this case, we take that exponent first. So this one's going to be n minus m for the exponent. So depending on where you want it located, um, it determines which exponent you subtract from which one. So in the numerator, subtract the numerator's exponent from the denominator's exponent. And if you want it to end in the denominator, you subtract the denominator's exponent from the numerator's exponent. All right, and the last one we're gonna talk about here is the power of a quotient, okay? Which is very similar to um, power of a product. Again, product being multiplication and quotient being division, there's an inverse relationship here, which says that when we have more than one base being multiple or raised to the power of n, every base gets that power of n. Same thing here, even though with or it's the same with division. So both of these, a and b, will be raised to the power of m. All right, so that's what we're going to write here. A is raised to the power of m, and b is raised to the power of m. Again, that probably should have been written here. So that's a review of all of our rules, plus the two new ones. So now what we're going to do is we're going to jump into some examples um, down below. So we'll do that in just one second. All right, so we've gone through the uh, properties here, and we're ready to do some examples. So let me get my screen to operate for me. There we go. <clears throat> so here's some examples. We'll run through the properties. This is going to be our division property that we're going to check here um, with our exponents. We can see that we've got like bases and we're generally going to keep our our base in the numerator so we won't usually do it to the denominator unless it needs to be 
um, in which case that you're looking for something that results in a negative in the numerator, which you're going to have to move it eventually to the denominator anyway, because exponents cannot be negative. So that's the only time that you really consider that. But for most of the ones we're going to do here, um, we'll find that we're going to go ahead and keep it in the numerator. So in that case, we see that we got the same basis. And by the quotient property here, or the division property of exponents, we say that we're going to have a, a like base. It's going to end up in the numerator. So that means we're going to take 16 and we're going to subtract 14. Okay. And then we're going to clean that up and we end up with a squared. Okay, let's try another one here. We've got, you can see here, we've got C as our base and we've got D as our base. So we've got two to deal with, um, two things to keep track of. So we're going to go ahead and try the C's first here. So we're going to take and leave it in the numerator. So it's going to be C to the negative one and then we're going to subtract the 5 from the denominator. Again, the order of this matters. We can't do it the other way, because if we do, the C should be in the denominator. Um, we'll do the same thing for D. <clears throat> in this case, D to the third power minus this negative 4. Careful with that. Two negatives. We know that that's a spot for a mistake. So those are both in the numerator. Now we just have to clean them up. Um, we'll find that c to the negative 1 minus 5 is c to the negative 6. And we'll see here that these two are going to become positive overall, so we're going to end up with d to the 7th. Now this would be a likely case that we would see that this 5 is going to be larger than this negative 1, and it's going to result in a negative number when we move up here. This may be the case where we actually have taken c to the 5 um, minus negative 1 and had c to the 6th in the denominator. We could have done that. But it's just the same thing to go ahead and take this C value because of that negative exponent and move it to denominator. So it's really about the same thing. Just gives us another option. So let's clean this up and see what the result is. In this case, D to the seventh stays in the numerator. Nothing is going on with that one. This negative or the C to the negative sixth power will be moved to the denominator, and that should be our answer for that. All right, so let's take a look at six because it looks a little bit like there's a little more going on. We've got three different ones here. Um, and let's go ahead and tackle that. We'll kind of do this quickly because I want to keep these as short as possible for you. So again, using the division property, I'm going to take this x squared and I'm going to subtract this one, not zero, we're going to subtract this one from the denominator. My y's then, again, we can move this to the denominator. Let's just go ahead and do that. So I can see that this is a negative. I'm going to move this up. It's going to result in a negative overall. So I'm going to move them to the denominator, which means that I've got to take 4 this time and subtract negative 1 from the numerator. And notice that the y is in the denominator now. And we can do that same thing, actually, um, with actually the z will actually work out just fine. Um, we're going to move this up, and we're going to subtract those two. So it'll be, again, using the division property, we're going to take this z to the fourth. And we're going to subtract this negative 5 here. So we'll end up with z to the 4 minus negative 5. And now we'll clean that up. So we're going to get x to the 2 minus 1, which is 1. We don't need to write 1. Times z to the 4, or 4 minus negative 5, which is going to turn into a plus. So z to the 9th. And in the denominator, 4 minus negative 1, that will also result in a positive so y to the fifth. All right, let's take a look then with that in scientific notation. Okay, so let's take a look at number seven. It's uh, scientific notation. And you'll notice that in yesterday's notes, we took scientific notation. We had two coefficients here, and we multiplied them to get a new number and then adjusted if we needed to. But you'll notice today, though, we have a fraction. And I don't think you've ever paid attention, but you don't have a fraction in scientific notation. Scientific notation is built around the fact that it's a decimal system and that we can move the decimal left and right. So we need to start and change this immediately to some form of decimal. So we can look at this as two eighths and go ahead and put it in our calculator and divide it, or we could reduce it and realize that it's one fourth and then go ahead and say, oh, one fourth is 0.25. So we're going to go ahead and change that to 0.25 because that's the decimal that it is. Now we have to deal with this. This is in the numerator, 0.25, not in the denominator, it's a decimal. If we didn't put it in the denominator, it would be a completely different decimal if we did. So we need to keep these in the numerator. So we're going to take times 10, right, that's our common base, times 10, and we're going to take the third power minus the eighth power. And if we do it that way, it stays in the numerator. 
So we get 0.25 times 10 to the th third power minus 8. That then, let's take this 0.25 and rewrite it, times 10, cleaned up, will be negative 5. Okay, we're almost done, but we'll notice that this is not in scientific notation yet. This decimal place here has to move. Okay, it has to move here because this a value has to be between 1 and 10, and right now 0.25 is not. So what we'll notice though is that this is a negative 5, which means it really a division, correct? So it's a division of 10. So this has to move where this decimal place is originally, 0.25, has to move five places, two, three, four, five places. So it should be a really small number. But look what we have to do. We have to move it one more place to the right. So to get it here to be the number that it is, it has to move six places. So by moving right, we actually have to increase our number here. So it's gonna become a new value, and it's gonna be 2.5 times 10 to the negative 6, because now it has to move 6 places to get to where it needs to be. And then that's your answer for scientific notation. All right, so without doing another one of those, we're going to jump down here and check out some of our other properties. All right, so this is power of a quotient property where we've got a division, and that division is being raised to some power. Again, everything inside the parentheses, numerator and denominator, gets raised to the power of 3. We'll also notice that when we go to raise this x value here, it has a power of 2. So we're going to fall into power of a power, which means that these are going to end up being multiplied. So we're going to multiply 2 times 3. So let's go ahead and start this process. So 4 then gets raised to the third power. And x does also. And then here's our power to a power property, so 2 times 3. So if we clean this up, 4 times 4 is 16 times 3, not 4 times 3, I mean 4 times itself 3 times is going to result in 64. i get that to write again. So we get 64 in the numerator. Let's clean up the denominator. 2 times 3 is 6, so we get 64 over x to the 6th. And that's our result. I don't think we need to see another one of those. The rest are pretty standard. So let's take a look at one more example down here. And this is where there's a negative. So really it's going to be the same as the last one here, except for when we're done, we're expecting some power or some value to have a negative exponent. We're going to have to move it. This one has two constants. That's okay. It doesn't matter if it's a constant or a variable. We still treat it exactly the same. So let's go ahead and start this problem. Again, the um, power to a quotient says that we take 3, we raise it to the power of negative 2, and we take 5, and we raise it to a power of negative 2. The negatives then are telling us to flip it. So we're going to go ahead and switch positions. The 5 is going to go to the numerator, and its 2 is going to become positive. And the 3 is going to go to the denominator, and its power is going to become positive. And now we can go ahead and do the exponent part. So 5 times 5 is 25, and 3 times 3 is 9. Um, we need to see if there's any um, reduction that can be done. And as you can see, there's not. So it'll say 25 ninths. Let's do one. All right, so we can see here with number six, there's something interesting going on with this negative sign here. Um, and we learned earlier that if we have a negative, um, and this is multiple parts, right? So we've got uh, a, a base of two, a base of x, and a base of y. So we got two variables and a constant. We know that if we had some base that was negative and we raised it to a even power, that it should come out to be a positive number. Um, but this may confuse you because there is a negative here. And so that might be a little bit distracting. So let's take care of this negative first. Sometimes it's easier to clean things up before we really think about it. So let's clean this negative up by flipping these. And the negative is not going to be addressed with that. And then we'll reevaluate and see if we can take that and get that negative cleaned up without any, uh, any problems. So let's go ahead and flip this because that's what this negative is telling us to do. Um, we did a little different here. We went ahead and um, raise 3 to the negative 2 and raise 5 to the negative 2, but we could have just flipped them originally, and that's what we're going to do here. So we're going to say, um, and we can keep it in parentheses, we're going to take this negative, that's there it is, and instead of writing 2x in the numerator, we're going to write y, and then 2x is going to go to the denominator. So really what we kind of did was we broke up this negative 4 into negative 1 times 4, and we address this negative part right now. So that seems kind of funky, but again, we can do this property, and you're comfortable with this property, and we know what a negative does. It flips these. So we flipped them, and that becomes a positive 4. 
maybe not what you thought was going to happen, but that is how that works. And it is a, and it is not, we didn't break any rules, so it's good. So now let's go ahead and address this. These all have to have the power of four. So we're going to go ahead and address that power of four. We can even look at this. Let's break it up and kind of look at what's happening. Cause again, this is where exponents can become a little tricky because there's a lot of little details. So let's break this up into negative one times y divided by 2x, all raised to the fourth power. I wouldn't expect you to write this out, but we're going to do it so that you can see what's going on here because there's a lot of little implied rules. So this 4 will raise this negative 1 to the fourth power. So really, if we want to break this apart, so we're going to do our um, quotient of a power property. So we're going to take negative 1, we're going to raise it to the fourth power, and we're going to take times our y value, raise it to the fourth power, over 2, which also gets raised to the fourth power. Again, common mistake is to forget the coefficient. Happens a lot. Be careful with that. And the x is raised to the fourth power. So now we did our quotient to our, um, quotient to our power property. So now we can start to clean this up. This right here, if you take negative 1 times negative 1, makes a positive 1, times a negative 1 makes a negative 1, times the last negative makes it positive. So this actually cleans itself up and becomes a multiplication of one, which we won't see because we anything multiplied by one is itself. So we are left with, let me just change the color here. We're left with just this because this turns into one, right? And anything times one is itself. So let me change the color back and let's continue on. Y to the fourth, there's not a lot to do with that. So we're gonna write Y to the fourth, leave it in the numerator. And then the 2 to the 4th, we actually know what that's going to be. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 2 is 16. And then the x to the 4th stays in the denominator. And then that's our final answer. All right, so I hope these notes are good for you. Hopefully they're synced this time so that the words match my writing. I tried uh, a new method to make sure that that happens. A little bit more work, but at least it's done. Um, and you can see here's your homework. Page 421 through 17 odds and 21 through 49 odds. It should cover most of this. Tomorrow will be a review on these, and I will see you then. All right. Have a good night.